Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. Um, today I'm going to um, take you through a, a panorama and also to show you that you don't have to have hundreds of lenses in your bag. In fact, you can generally get away with just one or two lenses. Uh, and in this case, I had a compact lens on as I was traveling. So I just had a 28 millimeter F2. Uh, it's quite a small uh, lens for the Sony range, but it is very sharp. And um, and as a result, if I wanted to get wider, and broader scenes than the 28 mil would allow me, then uh, I, I would need to do uh, a pano shot and combine them later in, in Lightroom, which is what we're going to do here. So we're going to do a process of this panorama. We're also going to have a little bit of a tidy up, move a few bits and pieces around and, uh, and see if we can in, do a little bit of day to night as well. So these three raw files are available. Um, if you look down in the comments, you'll find the link and uh, you're welcome to download them and, and follow along. Um, if you do choose to show the image on social media, all I'd ask, please, is that you just give um, some credit to myself, Jamie Mathlin. That would be wonderful. So let's get started. I've got three images here. As you can see there, they're all taken around about eight seconds, F11, ISO 50. Um, so I've tried to drop the ISO down as low as possible so I could get the river um, as smooth as possible with the amount of light that there was. It was just before dawn, um, so it, it was a good time. Uh, if you do ever go to Florence um, to see the Pont Vecchio Bridge, which is what we're going to be looking at here, um, best time of day is definitely uh, dawn if you're going to go there because everybody's still asleep and you get the place to yourself. Um, if you go five, six hours later, then there's probably 50 to 100,000 people on the streets and you, you can't move. So good tip, get up early and um, go and see these beautiful uh, cities when there's nobody else around and you can shoot them as well, obviously, and, and bring those memories home. So we're going to take the three images that we've got here. Uh, I'm, what, I, number one is selected at the moment. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select number three. So all three are effectively illuminated. <clears throat> then I'm going to right click on the actual, uh, any one of the images, doesn't matter. And I'm going to go to photo merge. Okay. And then I'm going to select panorama. So we're going to click that. And uh, we'll go into the panorama module and what it will do is it will combine those those three images together. Now, over on the right, you do have three different modes that you can use. Generally, if you're doing photography associated with uh, architecture or buildings where you've got lots of straight lines, you really do need to try to keep to perspective. Um, and, and if you can take more photographs than you think is necessary to overlap them better. Spherical, if I if I click on that, you'll see that you, you get a curvature of, of the roof line there and cylindrical is even more. Um, so you've got this tall but curve. So we don't we don't want that. We want perspective. So we're going to select perspective here. Now, if I um, if I take off the auto crop, you'll see that the actual image itself is quite a sort of broad, broad shot here. So I I turn off the auto crop because excuse me. <clears throat> I turn off the auto crop because it it gives us the ability to crop later. If you put auto crop on it, we'll just find the average of this and then you'll actually lose some of these buildings on the other side here. So auto settings also just uh, gives it some idea. Again, we don't need that. We're going to do those, uh, those uh, changes shortly when we go back into Lightroom. Create a stack, I generally take, what that does, it takes the three images that you saw previously and it puts them behind this one image once it's been uh, combined into a pano. Now you, you've got two other options here. You've got boundary warp. You can pull this up and it will effectively move your boundaries up. And if you go all the way up to the top, you'll see you'll get that curvature starting to appear again. Um, so you can warp the boundaries a little bit if you if you want to just to just to sort of bring it a little bit closer so but not enough to make it noticeable that there's a curve there and also fill edges if i click fill edges then these white spaces will be filled with what the um what the program thinks is adequate uh, to fill those spaces so i've clicked that there and you can see it's put the rest of the sky in um it's not done a very good job on the wall down here at the bottom and it's done some strange thing with the building up here so it's not really a lot of use to us with the, with this particular image um 
so what we'll do is we will stick with no, no fill edges we've added a little bit of uh, boundary warp and then what we'll do is we'll click merge so Lightroom will now as you can see on the top left is now merging this um, so these are 42 megapixel images so there's there's three of them and um, we'll bring those together probably make around about a 60 megapixel image so uh, once it's once it's complete so there we go it's uh, it's it's put the image in as we as we saw and it's fully rendered so you've got that detail now you know if we go in close here you can see lots of detail lots of detail here so um let's just see how big it is uh so it's 12500 times 13000 so um what does that what does that give us 12500 times 13000 gives us 162 megapixel image so it's huge it's absolutely huge so it's going to be a lot of fun uh, to, to do this so let's uh, let's kick off so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the crop that we talked about earlier so i'm just going to get rid of the bottom here just use these little triangles to bring them in or out if you have the triangle up by the way in lightroom it means that as you go down to it the film strip will appear or or the um navigator screen on the left will appear if you hover over that if you click on them it it keeps them in view all the time that's what i do with the toolbar on the, on the left if you click on it again it'll go back to auto disappear so we're going to go over to the crop tool and we're going to bring bring this down so it's just inside there at the top i'm going to bring this in here so we've got the edge of that building i'm just going to keep it I know there's a little bit showing there, but we're going to sort the perspective in a moment. So, in fact, I might even just leave that over for now. And I'm just going to bring the bottom up here just to cover the bottom part of that, that mark there. There we go. So I'm going to hit return. So, um, so now we've got the image uh, cropped reasonably well. But I want to sort the perspective out. You can see this is falling away over this side. Um, and uh, <clears throat> this could be a little bit straighter on this side. So to do that... You go down to transform so you find transform and in there you have a number of options now you can just click auto and see what it does well it it didn't straighten this one over here um so i'm not going to go with that i'm going to go with guided which is the next one over you can also click verticals you can you can click the verticals and you can click on the uh draw line option here and you can uh you can take that drain pipe for example over here and you've got little zoom boxes you can see where you can Go to and I can take this corner of this this building here and just uh, draw that draw that down and you can see that uh, that pulls those to the vertical um, and I can also um, go across this line here and make that a vertical if I want to so um, let me just uh, but in this case it's going to cause that to fall away so I can also put another vertical along sorry horizontal along that line so if i go back into the crop tool you can see that we've lost the the building on the left hand side um, and we, we we've um, cropped down quite a bit on the top there so i can i can build the image back up a little bit but i do want a bit more of the building on the other side there so i'm going to uh, go i'm going to switch that off for a second there we go um, i'm going to click on those lines again this time I'm going to highlight the line and delete it. Press delete button once you've highlighted the line. Delete. There we go. And we've got those verticals. So I might just put a horizontal in on the top of this this here just to be sure that that is that is straight. There we go. So I'm going to I'm going to accept that we're going to have this this line rising rising up here. Maybe we could soften it a little bit. So rather than going all the way across like we did before, what we could horizontal and then we could just have a, a slightly less of a, a rising roof there that that could be an option you see how i did that if it's on the line it will be straight if i pull it down you'll let it go up obviously if i go above it will come down yeah so you can you can control how much you want and the more i give the more i get over here you see so if i just take that a little bit more i could get a little bit more there maybe a little bit more in fact, I'm going to bring that up just a little bit because, well, let's see. Well, how far down can we go? There we go. 
Okay, I'm going to sit with that position there. I'm quite happy with that. Okie dokie. Um, so we've got a little bit of sky showing up here. Um, that window is is sort of on the edge of the crop and that, that will be a little bit of a, a problem. So I'm going to go back into crop there. I'm just going to bring that down. I'm just going to come in under that window there. Right, let's see if we can find a standard size for this. So whilst we're still in the crop tool, we'll go into custom and we can look at some of the different options we've got here. I'm going to go with 1610. That'd be quite a narrow. That works reasonably well. And it probably want a little bit more space down the bottom here. So maybe we can go um, four threes a bit too square. So um, maybe an eight by 10. No, that's going to be a bit too square as well. Um, so five by seven gives us a little bit more. If I just bring that up there, bring that down there. Just move that up. Yeah, five by seven works quite well. So it's a sort of standard size then. So going to hit return and accept that. So this is the image that we're going to work with. So. I'd like to get rid of this bin um, just to tie it up. There's a few bits of litter around. So I'm I'm just going, and this cable falling down here, coming across here is a bit, bit distracting. So I'm going to uh, right click here. I'm going to edit in Adobe Photoshop 2023 and it will load Photoshop and it will place the image, there we go, into Photoshop. So um, now we're in here. Let's have a quick look around down here. We're going to zoom in to this bin. This is the one thing I wanted to try to look at and get rid of. Um, there's quite a lot of rubbish and bits and pieces around there. So we, we, will, uh, we will zoom back out again. Now to zoom, you can hold down the option or alt key on a Windows and just wheelie your mouse. It will, it will uh, zoom in and out quite well. And if you want to move the image around, hold down the space bar and then use the left key there and you can, you can work your way around and have a look. So, um, CCTV cameras there as well um, but I won't go too far I don't want to make this video too long but I will get rid of this bin so um, I think the best way to get rid of this bin is to use a stamp tool so I'm going to click on the stamp tool here which is uh, clone stamp tool is S and you know how this works you 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 have to take a copy of something from somewhere and you transpose it you move it to somewhere else so for example if I want to get rid of the edge here I would Go to this position here, hold down the optional alt key and click once. And now I've got a copy of the corner of that, that bit of wall there. And I'm just going to move that down, line that up here. And then holding down the, the, the left mouse button, you can see the cross is where the image was taken from and the circles where we're painting. So as I move down, you will paint that bit of wall from above. There you go. But what you see is the top of the, the bin has reappeared at the bottom there because we painted into it. So you have to be careful with that. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to take a, a snap from there by holding down the Option key or, or, or Windows. And I'm just going to bring that down. Same thing. And you can see the top of the bin there has just reappeared. To get rid of this bit in the middle, you can take a stamp from, from anywhere here. Um, like so. And then you can just... Uh, Paint that out so we just made the bin a little bit shorter. What we're going to do is we're going to go across now so we can take a stamp from over here and then we can go over a little bit and a little bit just to make that work. That's it. Same on this side. Just uh, paint that that away by using that that stamp tool there, and then just a little bit in the middle there. Just to and we can do the same over here. Yeah. And now with the pavement underneath, you can see that there was a line there, so we could use that line there just to tidy that up a little bit. We could use this one over here just to come over a little bit more. But then we want to get rid of this bit, so we could we could take the the pavement from over here. We can uh, we can just paint away there. Take another stamp from here. Just work your way through. 
and maybe one from this side just to tidy up this bit on this this side here there we go and then just want to make sure you don't have any duplicated patterns so you just randomize a little bit so there we go and maybe one last one from this side just to get rid of that darker spot there there we go so that's got rid of that and so we just got to consider how we're going to do with this bit i think the thing to do is to come in a bit closer take a smaller brush <coughs> excuse me and then i'm just going to uh, come in here about here sorry that just option key and we're just going to come down and paint this in There's a little bit of a repeat of pattern there, so we'll take a snap from over there and just break that one up a little bit, so it's slightly different. <coughs> and then just to finish off these corners, I'm going to take another snip from over here, make the brush smaller still, and just pop in there on that corner there same over this side just a little bit there now if i want to get that line straight where i clicked over here because i've got the brush coming from above i click once i hold down the shift key and i click again and it will give you that nice straight edge from copying from above so there we go that works quite well so it's going to move down and we'll deal with this this litter here now you can use the stamp tool for this but the healing uh, brush tool spot healing brush tool is very good jay for this so you make your brush just your, your brush just a little bit bigger than the the thing that you're trying to remove and just make sure you thoroughly paint over it you need to make sure you've got about a 50 percent overhang around the outside of the object that you're trying to remove um you always find there's little, little bits and pieces around so you just have a look around make sure you know, cigarette butts here we go look we can get rid of those just to tidy up if you don't get rid of these little things if you ever do do a, a big print of your images uh, and somebody comes to look at your nice large print what you will find is they will see these uh, these uh, cigarette butts and the, the rubbish and garbage that's around on the ground and uh, yeah there's something there don't know what that is going to take make it a little bit smaller and just just get in there and paint that bit out that's it so one thing I did see on the lamp up here was this solar panel. Um, and again, it's not it's not particularly fetching. Um, we can use the stamp tool to remove this as well. So we'll take a small, small stamp tool here. We will hold down the optional alt key from over here and we will take a stamp as such. And then what we'll do is we will literally paint that down. And the same on this side, we will take a, we'll take it from below that crack, otherwise we will all we will end up repeating that crack there just uh and you see how this line comes up through we need to to bring that line up through so what we can do is take an even smaller brush just big enough for the line there take a stamp from down there place it place it on the line and then we can we can paint that in as well just paint that line in now we do need to do something here we need to flare where this um well i will just get rid of that little bit of the there we go where these steels come down to hold the lantern we will need to to do something so what we could do is we could use we could use this this area down here and bring this up so we could take take this this um mark here optional alt key bring it up to to here let's make sure the lines line up that's it and just paint that across there and bring it down and join it to there so the stamp tool is an incredibly powerful tool really is um, what you can do with it copying one part of the screen to another part of the screen is uh, is, is quite impressive so we've we've done that so we just need to join these up here now the way I do that is we're gonna have to freehand draw this but let's let's show you how to do it we're going even closer 
So we're all down to pixel level now, as you can see. But we want this darkness to cross over onto this, this, this pad here. So what I can do is I can take a stamp here on this dark part, make my brush smaller, and I literally can just paint that in as such. Do the same on this side, just take take a stamp from over here and just paint that in. Another stamp. And literally just just paint these into this area. I can got a big nice big black area here I can use to just just bring that across there. Same on this side. I'm just going to fill that area in underneath and then just using little bumps to give it some texture and maybe we just need to just do that little bit there as well so what you end up with is is it drawn in uh, it works quite oops works quite well so I'm just going to zoom back out there we go and if you go to to a one-to-one -one pixel level which is where we're at now I would challenge anybody to say that that wasn't uh, that wasn't real. It looks pretty good. So let's just zoom back out. I just wanted to deal with this this cable here. So a good tip for dealing with this. I think we can leave it under bars under the windows. I think that's okay. So it's just getting rid of it from this piece of wall here. So again, we zoom in. So what we can do is we can use the spot healing tool. It works quite well for these sort of things. Take your brush and make it sort of fifty percent bigger than the item you're trying to remove either side. So you've got an overhang. Click once here, hold down the shift key, and click again over here. And what it will do is it will do a line there. It needs a little bit bigger, so I'm going to Command Z uh, to undo that, make that brush slightly bigger. I'm going to click again on the center, hold down the shift key, click again. And uh, yeah, it's still left a little bit of a line there. So let's use the let's use the clone the, the clone stamp tool. In this case, not working particularly well with a healing brush. So I'm going to take I'm going to take a stamp from just above here. So Option Alt, take a stamp, bring that in there. Click once, go across to this side, Shift click, and uh, it's it's pretty well got rid of it. There is a little bit of a line underneath, so I'm just going to freehand draw that little bit out. There we go, that worked. So same over here, but we've got broken plaster here, so we need to go underneath. So we hold Option Alt key down here. Take a stamp from there, go in there, just draw that down so we don't uh, we don't get that in the way. Um, I think we need another little bit there just to just to get rid of that. So I'm just taking multiple stamps is what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to take from the top here. I'm just going to come across here. And I think, bring that down, this is, there we go. And then this has got a little bit on the wall here. Um, so we can try the healing brush again, healing brush tool again. So click up there, click there, shift click there. That's not too bad. Let's just freehand that last piece out. And then once more over there where it's left a little bit of a mark. And these buildings are all very dirty and grubby anyway, so uh, um, that looks okay to me. So Yep, looking around, everything else looks okay. All right, I'm going to zoom out again. So I think there's one last thing to do now, and that is uh, there's an air conditioning unit up top there. I'm just going to hop in there and um, so zoom in, and we'll just remove that. So let's try the spot healing tool here. So just going to come across there, and then just go around, fill in the gap, see what happens. Not bad, not too bad at all. Take that bit off the top one more time. It 
seems to be copying there so I'm going to go into the stamp tool now and just take a stamp from above there and then I'm just going to fill in along there and another stamp from up here just take that a little bit out there not too bad and then the aerial that was associated with that we will just make the make the the uh, brush a little bit smaller by using the square brackets just to the left of the return key I'm going to take a stamp from here and then I'm just going to go down like that take another stamp from above and just go through there that's it I'm going to stamp here and we'll just take that line out so that's good okay go back to the full size and I think we're done for now so we're going to pop this back into Lightroom. So I'm going to go to File, Close, and Save. Okay, I think I mention it every time, but but don't go File, Save, or File, Save As because it will put it back in the folder, but it doesn't put it back in the Lightroom registry. You'd have to resynchronize the folder to get it back. But if you just do File, um, Close, and then Save, as you can see, it's saving down the bottom left corner. It will save it back, and when you go back into Lightroom you will find it there it is that's the one we done so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the this sort of end process if you like to um make sure that that's all okay so we're going to um firstly we're going to uh, open up the shadows it's quite nice i'm going to bring down the highlights all the way that looks pretty good. I'm going to add a bit more warmth to the scene. It's amazing when you bring up the temp slider. It's almost as though you you know you you were here and then you bring the sun into the shot. It's amazing. But you always need to if you do bring quite a bit of temp in as we're doing there plus 32, add a little bit of magenta just to balance the colors off. Um, it looks looks a bit more natural if you do that. That's okay. Um, I think what we're also going to do is. Uh, we're going to look at the let's let's look at our our sky. So I'm going to take a mask. I'm going to take the sky mask, and it will take the mask for the sky. There we go. And I'm going to intersect that sky mask. You go to these little three dots, as you can see here. If you intersect that with a gradient, a linear gradient, and pull the gradient down from, let's say, like this across like this. Now you've got the sky mask with a, a radial gradient, uh, sorry, a linear gradient over it. So if I now reduce the, the exposure, it will reduce it from left to right, as you can see there, and bring a little bit more detail into the sky there. So I think that's okay. I think the edge, the edge here is it's a slight little halo there. So what we can do is we can uh, we can add a brush uh, and take a small brush there. Let's take a small brush and just run along that that edge and that will just darken that down just a little bit to make that work so that's okay so we're also whilst we're in here as well as dropping the exposure we're going to increase the contrast quite a bit of contrast there and uh, we're going to bring the highlights down just a bit more um, and then with skies what's always good is is clarity plenty of clarity in the sky a bit of clarity into the sky there that edge is not working particularly well, so I'm going to um, I'm going to subtract from the sky. Now let me think about how best to do that. We could we could uh, take the linear gradient and we could add to that. Let's try that. So add a brush, and we could. Um, we go along that edge there with the linear gradient. There we go. Just color that in. Just get rid of that little halo that's running along there. That's better. And then we could go down this this edge here. Do a little click, click there. Just to, using the shift just to to fill that ed edge in. Okay, so sky's looking pretty good. 
Um, what I'm going to do is darken the, 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 the total scene. So I'm going to come out of the mask for now and I'm going to bring the whole scene down a little bit. It's a little bit darker. There we go. And then what we're going to do, so come down one, 1 1.4 stops. And what we're going to do is we're going to relight the area to give us a sense of the lighting that you'd have on the buildings. And also we're going to light this street lamp here and, and make the sky a little bit brighter. So let's do the sky first. So I'm going to take a, another mask. This time I'm going to create a radial gradient. And I'm going to pull it in from this side. But what I'm, I want to do, I don't want this radial gradient on, on the... Um, on the buildings so i'm going to um, go to intersect and i'm going to intersect with the um with the sky okay but the sky i'm going to invert right so the inverts ticked here so what that means is is that this gradient is now doing the sky here but not not on the buildings themselves so if i if i now for example brighten that sky up add some highlights in there Add a little bit more temp into that scene there just to bring a little bit more color in a little bit of magenta into there um, and i can increase the saturation as well but it will, will have quite a green issue if we go too far with that so i'm just going to uh, maybe bring up the magenta just a little bit more there we go and i'm also going to um, add some more clarity to that sky so you can start to see the edge of these clouds is looking looking pretty good um, so that's looking okay. So you've got this brightness coming in from this side. Um, but we also want to make sure that the water is also bright down here. So we're going to create another radial gradient coming in from this side. And we're just going to brighten the water there the same. So it's nice and bright, a bit brighter. There we go. But we don't want it on the buildings. So we can subtract a brush. We can have quite a high flow. Lots of feather, because what we're going to do is just go along that that building line there and just come around there like so, and just take out that uh, the light, that, the extra light that was on the buildings, just so you got that sense that the water is being illuminated. And it needs a little bit of brightening over here. So using this same mask three, we can add a brush and uh, turn the flow down just a little bit, leave the feather at, at very high, and then just come in there and just. Just brighten that up over there as well. There we go. So uh, that's probably just a little bit too bright. So I'm just going to back that off just a little bit. There we go. Oh, too much. Lovely. The grass is also a bit bright here. So we're going to go back to that subtraction brush, which is brush one. And we're just going to run along there, along the grass there, and just bring that back down again. That's it. Lovely. Okay. So that's looking okay. I'm going to do this lantern now. So classic day tonight. We're going to uh, just zoom in on the lantern. There we go. There we go. And we're going to take a new mask, radial gradient. We're going to make this radial gradient slightly larger than the lamp itself. Maybe a little bit bigger because this has got a glass top as well. I'm going to bring the exposure up to maximum and I'm going to add some colour in as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just come in a bit closer still. I'm going to come in at 200%. And now I'm going to subtract from this radial gradient a brush. The feather's going to be at zero and the flow's going to be at 100%. So we're going to take everything away. So wherever I draw, we'll remove the radial gradient. So what we're going to do is we're going to overlap this metal framing slightly. Click once and go to the top of the metal framing and click again. And then click, shift, click. So this, it's the shift that gives you, so click, shift, click, gives you the straight line. Click, shift, click. Just going to come out to the edge of that one, just going to overlap that slightly. Click, shift, click. And then I'm just going to come around the bottom here. Click, shift, click. So all that's the glass. So um, sorry about that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a smaller brush just to run along this this edge here so click shift click just to blacken that out around there and the even smaller brush so i'm just going to come down using the uh, square brackets to the left of the um, return key you can size your brush i'm just going to click shift click just to get that that edging in there so 
So now what we have is the lamp illuminated. I'm going to make my brush bigger and I'm just going to take away the rest of this radial gradient that's around the outside. If you do by mistake go over, then you can always command or control Z to undo that. Now I'm going to zoom back out to 100. I'm going to hover over the mask and you'll see where the mask is. And you can see it. there's a couple of bits top and bottom, the red, that needs to be removed. So I'm just going to go around again and just make sure that's fully removed. So that's OK. Now, the real key to lighting a lamp like this is, is you've got to make it look like the lamp, the lamp inside the lantern is actually the brightest part. So we're going to click on here, right click on this one and duplicate the mask, not the radial gradient because we want the mask with all of the subtractions that we included. So now we've we've doubled the brightness. Effectively, we've got two layers on there and they might think, well, that looks silly now. But if you go to the top one and you click and you bring it down to the size of the lamp that's inside, like so, then when you click away, you can see it's illuminated and it's also um, illuminated the lamp very brightly. Now the real trick to this is is that what, what we'll do is I'll just go back into there, click on that one, we can actually make that just a little bit smaller. What we can do is we're going to have to put some additional light on the wall. When we do that, this will brighten even more. So I'll show you what happens. So we want to get this back to this level. We can do that shortly. So I'm just going to come back to uh, to fit. So we can see this 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 lamp is is now illuminated. But what we're going to do is um, I'm just going to get the color right. Ask for um, just a little bit more orange and magenta just to get that that color a little bit more realistic. We're now going to take um, another mask, this time another radial gradient, and we're going to need to light this wall here for this lamp. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this radial gradient, place it where where the light is itself. Um, I'm going to bring it down just slightly. And then we're going to bring up the exposure to light the wall. So it looks like it's lighting the wall there nicely. Add that little bit of colour back in. That's quite nice. A little bit of magenta to balance it. But of course, we don't want it over here. The light wouldn't be there. There'd be a shadow. This would not be illuminated over to the left. So what we're going to do is zoom back in. And we're going to remove this. And we do that by, as always, subtracting a brush. The brush can be at zero feather and it can be at 100% flow. And I'm just going to come out of the range of it down here, this wall line. And I'm just going to click on the edge of this wall line down here. And then I'm going to move up up here and then I'm going to overhang just slightly shift and click again. Right. And what it will do is it, it, it will if there we go, it will actually take out that that start to take it out. It needs to go over just a little bit further. So I'm just going to make my brush a little bit smaller uh, using the, those square bracket keys. Overhang that wall just a little bit more. And uh, there we go. It's got rid of it now. So we'll zoom back out. Sticking with this big brush, we can do the rest of it. We can just come down and take the rest of it away. There we go. So if you now hover over the mask, you can see it's just that area, not the area to the left. So that's looking pretty good. But now I need to light the, the path here a little bit on the wall. So we're going to uh, we're going to take another radial gradient. We're just going to put that over the wall there slightly. I think I might even go this way. Like, like so, and then just brighten that up a little bit. There we go. Add the color, a little bit magenta. So the wall is illuminated. You can come further down if you want to. So it looks like you're getting almost getting a, a reflection off the top of the wall. Uh, what's really useful when you're doing this with this sort of texture in the wall and area is you can always add to this uh, radial gradient uh, some clarity. It really picks up, makes it look like it's shining off the top of the wall there. Uh, and I might even add a little bit of clarity to that one as well. Just bring the brightness down just a little bit. There we go. Now we need to put some light on the grass and we need to put some light on the pavement down there. So what we can do is take another radial gradient. This time we're going to put it <clears throat> down on the ground here so that the lamp's shining down. The brightest point from that lamp is going to be the center of this radial gradient. It's going to be about here. I'm just going to bring that out there a little bit. And like this area so I'm going to bring the exposure up there we go add that color that we've been using a bit of magenta just to balance it off that looks good so it's illuminated that area quite well now 
this this radio gradient has illuminated the wall more so we need to take this section out um, just to make sure that this wall is not illuminated more so we're going to subtract a brush remember it's on 100% on flow and it's on zero feather and we're just going to come in it's going to come in here click once and then shift click just to remove that and I'm just going to take it away from that side as well so you can see it's just illuminated there it's not picking up on the wall now we want a bit of light over here we could do that by whilst we're in this particular mask we can add a brush and this time we'll have a hundred percent feather and about thirty percent flow and then we could just paint a little bit of light just gently round here just to show that we've we've illuminated these plants up a little bit from this light so you're going to have a little bit of light coming in there but not too far back so that that works that works reasonably well so happy with that <clears throat> now what we do need to do also is bring some sun information in from over here uh, make the pont vecchio look a little bit more interesting now what they do do is they illuminate this bridge at night and the lights effectively sit on these little platforms if i zoom in you'll see you'll see these little platforms And you can see there's some lights just dotted around and they sort of uplight these buildings um, and they there is a little bit of light that goes down onto the the bridges so what we need to do is simulate that that look um, and the best way of course always is with a radial gradient and you can take a radial gradient as such and you can sort of maybe put it on that part of the bridge you can uplight this area and then you can bring the brightness up and add some color to it um, some of them are also at angles you sort of can light at different angles you can almost look as though the bridge down here is illuminated and you can light upwards so we just make that a bit brighter more color more magenta you can do that <clears throat> but it is quite bright over here to the left so actually what I'm going to do is just place this radial gradient on the whole bridge itself because um, this light's sort of going to pour across here although this would sort of be in shadow depending where the sun was what we can do is we can bring some some interest to this bridge by just bringing this radial gradient up onto the bridge as such and it's brighter then maybe even a bit more this way and it's brighter this end and darker that end we don't want it over here so we do the same old story which is subtract a brush with zero feather 100% flow and we just want to take the end of this away there you go you can see that's removed and we also don't want it to brighten the sky above the building so we can also subtract the sky there we go that's taken that away now there would be a reflection down here onto these buildings so right click on here um, duplicate the mask take that new that one put it down onto the the the, the, the buildings that are in the water there we go and you can pop that in there um, maybe even bring that brightness up just a little bit more I'm going to add a little bit of clarity to that you can see it just sort of makes it pop a little bit more and um, and I've got to remove it from the from the grass here it's too bright here so subtract a brush and uh, we will just paint that out I'm going to just uh, just going to take the rest of that out there for a second um, I'm going to soften that with some with 100% feather just to run along that edge there we go just so it works on that edge there and that looks quite nice I think I might also pop back to this radial here and add some add some clarity there we go add some clarity to that maybe a little bit of texture as well just to bring that alive and a little bit of sharpness because that's quite a lot of the sort of detail here that works quite well and um, yeah I'm happy with that so need to do a little bit more with the sky um, I'm wondering whether we can create another radial gradient from over this side and and just try to pour pour some color in uh, over here it's um, yeah there's not, there's not a lot to play with there in terms of data and we're getting a greenish hue here so um, I think we can we could try the hue and just see if we can 
get a bit more color in there doesn't look like it we'll have a look in a little while at the uh at some of the blendings but i'm just going to back that back a little bit just so uh doesn't look too bad okay so it's looking pretty good um i think we probably just need to take this this a little bit wider turn it slightly and just get a little bit more going on across here um, and we need to light this area. These lamps in here need to sort of light that area a little bit as well. So we're going to create one more radial gradient just to pick up over those. And I'm going to go up and down with that. You can see this reflection on the road here. So if I just offset that slightly, what we'll do is we'll bring up the brightness in that area. So bring the brightness up. There we go. And uh, what we can do is just drop the highlights back just slightly so they're not glaring. Um, and then we can add some shadow to that area so it adds a bit of a glow um, but the real big one as always is this clarity bring some clarity up localized in that area see this reflection here it's really looks really really nice a little bit of texture i'm going to add a brush and this time the brush is going to be 100 percent feather sort of 20 30 percent something like that i'm just going to brush this light a bit further up the road here just to get that sort of wonderful glow on the road from those those lamps that are uh, illuminated there. It's given us a little bit more to play with here. Um, and then I think we just need to do something with this building. And I think either we, we can illuminate the windows, but this video is running a little bit longer now. So I think the best thing to do is perhaps just take another radial gradient on here. Bring it over to the left there. Um, and just maybe try to... To add a little bit more interest to this building up here now you see i moved it to the right uh, and the reason i moved it to the right is a lot of people just think well i want to like that so i'll plonk a radial you know totally totally in the center like this and i'll try and light it and you see this all too often and then it's they illuminate it like that maybe they add a bit of color yeah and a little bit magenta just to balance it again and and okay it didn't look too bad but if you just take that to the side here and you pull this out and just change the angle slightly you can bring that down a little bit more and just change the angle a little bit more you you end up with with quite a different sort of look it's actually slightly too bright I'm just going to back that away a little bit but you you see what i mean you you're getting this sort of detail i'm going to add a bit of a bit of clarity into that as well there we go i might even pull that down a bit further just bring that down now i don't want to light the sky here so of course i'm going to subtract uh, the the, uh, the sky that just takes that away there. Good. Now, just the final, the final four things. We're going to come out of there. Just going to go down and have a look at the um, the um, HSL sliders. Here they are. So, just want to see if we can pick up a little bit of the brightness in some of the colors. So, I'm going to go to luminance in this slider, and you can you can pick a color that you want to make brighter for example the green grass here if i move the green slider now i'm in luminance the grass will get brighter if i talk it down the grass will get darker so i'm just going to brighten the grass just a little bit the blue in the sky you can make the blue brighter if you want to or you can make it darker so we're going to keep that relatively dark because that's part of the the feel for what we've got going on here and then you've got the oranges here so i can make the oranges brighter or darker See that and the reds. I'm just going to make the reds a little bit brighter, and of course the yellows. I'm just going to add a bit more to the yellow. There we go. Yeah, looking pretty good. Do we need any purples? I don't think so. So uh, quite quite happy with that. Um, I'm just going to pop into. Um, I don't think I want to do tone curve. Um, I think I'd probably do a little bit of color grading here. Now, sometimes when you look into color grading, and you see these three discs, you think, oh my word, what, what, what do these all mean? And it's relatively straightforward. What you can do is you can pick the, the, uh, the shadows, highlights, or the mid-tones. Now, in your sliders at the top, you have your shadows and your highlights, and you have your, your whites and your blacks, which, by the way, we will do in a moment. Um, but you don't have a mid-tone, and a mid-tone is very, very, very useful. So what, what we can do with, with the, uh, the mid-tones is, is we can say, right, um, I want to change the color and the brightness of the midtones. Now, the way I do this is I take the 
the, the slider in here, which you could get the different colors with, and I take it to the very edge. So we've got maximum saturation, and then I rotate it round slowly until I find the color that I'm really looking for to try to balance this image off. So just by taking it all the way around, you see there's something that's quite nice there, and I come round through the magenta into the into the uh, into the reds and um, back into the yellows. So you can find sort of a color grade that that works quite well. That's very blue down there. And this is this is more that's more green. We don't want green. So it looks to me like we're we're looking to come in at a color as though there's a sunset going on here. So obviously it's too it's too much, but I'm just going to back the color down by moving back towards the center. There we go, about there. And then you've got this um slider here which you can increase or decrease the amount that you want from those mid-tones. So I'm just going to back that off just a little bit there. Now you can do the same with the shadows. So we bring the shadows all the way up. Now the shadows normally need to be the opposite of the mid-tone and the highlights, so which will be the blues, which would be down here somewhere. So I can pick a greeny blue, magenta there, pick a color that I like about there, and then back that color off by moving back towards the center. And again, you can move the slider to increase or decrease the amount that you get from that. So that's going to go roughly in the center. And the last one of all is the highlights. So again, maximum color, move the wheel around till you find a color that works for the highlights very, very well. So um, I think somewhere, somewhere in here, I think about there, and then just bring them up just a little bit, just bring those highlights up. And at the bottom, you've got your blending and your balance. So you can blend more or less of what you've what you've done. If you bring it right down to zero, all of those things that you've done won't won't affect it at all. And as you start to bring it up, you can you can see the effect that they have. Um, and the balance is how much you go in one direction versus the other. So you can you can find your position there. So I'm quite I'm quite happy with that. So just gonna do my blacks and whites, gonna go back up to my blacks and whites, gonna hold down the optional alt key grab the white slider and you can see the whites are already there we're cropping where the lamps are and we're cropping where the bright sun is so i'm just going to back that off a little bit till the bright sun disappears um, and then i'm going to go to the blacks bring the blacks down until i see some black appear so not a lot of black not a lot in there if you go too far it gets a bit too i'm just looking at the histogram at the moment and i've got a yellow yellow triangle that looks okay. I'm just going to brighten the whole scene up a little bit. Just going to bring that contrast up a little bit. I'm going to back the saturation off just slightly, but increase the vibrance. The vibrance is color, color contrast. Not too much because the sky starts to look a little bit, uh, a little bit unnatural. A little bit more temp, and then I'm just going to pop in a. Um, and effects go down to effects and put in a post crop vignette. I'm just going to bring down those corners about minus 25. And when you do this, remember the feather slider just to bring the feather slider up just to make that work quite well. So, this has given us a sort of more of a vintage look. Um, it's still a bit bright. I'm just going to back the highlights off a little bit more and uh, bring those whites down just a little bit more. And then uh, maybe a little bit of texture. That's looking, it's looking pretty good. So um, maybe a little bit darker in the sky up here. I'm just going to go back into masks, create a new mask, take a linear gradient, bring a linear gradient in from there. Just darken that down just a little bit more in the top top of the uh, the image. And uh, yeah, I think um, let's back that back a little bit, a little bit more contrast on there, and. Um, Open up the shadows a little bit. There we go. On the bridge. So that's the subject is the Pont Vecchio. Uh, we use the original sky here. We could have changed the sky to a sunset if we wanted to. That That's always a nice trick. Um, but no, I'm, I'm quite happy with that image. I think it uh, works quite well. I think we might even adjust the crop, you know, and take the top out here. Just bring this down to here. So you've got the window in there. Does that work? I'm not sure it does. Command Z to undo. So um, 
yeah, I think we've got a little dust spot there. Just going to go to the healing tool here and just uh, take that out. There we go, that's gone. Can go over that. So, I think we have it. So we've got that sort of older style, almost vintage look um, of the shot we've took there. With the colour grading, it gives you that almost film, that Kodachrome look uh, to, to, to your picture. So um, that was the before. Yeah, and that's the after. So the before. So you've got that blueness. You've got that sort of um, before the sunrise, that blue hour look. And then we've brought that, that colour and we've brought that vintage sort of look to it. So... Um, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this this video. Um, uh, if you did, then please uh, please click like and uh, always welcome some comments. It's always good to hear what you guys think. And um, also, um, if you enjoy what I'm doing on YouTube, I'd love you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. So that would be lovely uh, for you to join me on my adventure here. Um, I will be getting the next video back to a little bit of uh, more day tonight. So um, be ready for that. But for now... I'll say uh, thank you for watching and bye-bye. Uh,